Managing the behaviour of children who will happily step over each and every boundary that you put for them takes time, dedication and a degree of stubbornness on your part. Alongside the daily firefights, you need the drip feed of a more strategic plan. You need to address the heart of the problem, not just the symptoms. Hooking the hard to reach requires the patience and guile of a master fisherman and the heart of a lion tamer. Look, there's a moment in all our lives when we realise that the adult world is not as dependable, as safe, as secure as we once believed. For the majority of young people, this realisation comes in the teenage years. For a lucky few, their awakening is delayed even further. But for many, many others, it comes during the primary school years. A parent who promises that they'll be there for you suddenly isn't. And it can be the catalyst for even young children to distrust the adult world. Trust issues at home can be compounded by a high staff turnover at school or college. And although many well-meaning people try to give short-term help, children need consistency. They need people who are going to be there for the long term and not just for a short time. Put simply, children who are hard to reach may have decided that adults should be given a wide berth. The barriers come up, some try to disengage with learning, some stop communicating, most demonstrate their anger, confusion and lack of trust with a behaviour that says, leave me alone, I'm not worth bothering with. We recognise in children who have a low self-esteem and a limiting self-belief this negative internal monologue. The root causes for each child may be very different, but it usually includes negative assumptions about their own ability. You know, I'm stupid, I don't understand number, I can't read. Uh, a worry about the lack of commitment of adults around them. You know, teachers always leave. My dad said he was going to be there and he wasn't. And the collection of labels that they've built up over time. We recognise this monologue in the classroom. As you present the piece of paper to Darren, he rejects it before it lands on the table. I can't do it. It's the first thought, followed by, very quickly, a raft of avoidance tactics designed to protect himself from further failure and embarrassment. Kind of makes sense. We also recognise it when trying to give Darren praise and positive reinforcement, as he immediately rejects the idea that he could have done something right. We spend our days firefighting, with every behaviour management strategy that we know Yet a few children reject carrots and they dodge every stick. They crash through every boundary that we seem to invent and they seem to be headed for the cliff. Because the immediate behaviours are so disruptive and so urgent, we find ourselves with little time for dealing with what is truly important. The repairing of self-esteem. Spearing those negative spirals and monologues and replacing it with positive self-image. Now, if that principle sounds attractive, be warned. The practice is difficult and it's stressful. It's because it's so hard and so time consuming that we continue this pursuit for quick fixes. The bad news, of course, is there aren't any. You can't hook the hard to reach by throwing techniques at them or with a nice, neat toolbox of behavior management ideas. You can't draw them back in with years of punishment or through exclusion and reintegration. You can't change their behaviour, attitude and anger with the magic bullet. Neither can you address what motivates them to disengage or interrupt years of learned behaviour overnight. Change with the most challenging pupils does not run in straight lines. And there are many cul-de-sacs on the way to the straight and narrow. The hard work is about going the extra few miles. And at times it might be uncomfortable. Start sending positive messages home. Sandwich bad news about the day in between positive observations. I know that it's easy to assume parents don't care and they won't be interested in the positive news. Persist. Don't play to the assumptions. Persist. Now the hard work begins and you may need to go the extra few miles without reward, without applause. And at times it's going to feel like you're working for nothing. At times it's going to be uncomfortable. Stick with it. You're doing the right thing. You're dealing with them in a different way. 
They may appreciate it immediately. It may be 10 years time when you're walking down the high street that you get stopped by that student who thanks you. You may never get the thanks you deserve. Well, that's not what we're in it for, is it? Expect your colleagues to criticise. Expect your colleagues to shake their heads and tell you that you're not a social worker. On a daily basis, go out of your way to build positive relationships with the students you're working with. It's important they grow to trust you, to like you and to lean on you. With those foundations in place, you can start fishing. You're going to hook them back into learning. Find the talent or ability that's been smuggled in behind the obvious emotional baggage and build on it. If it's well hidden, consider putting the hook in yourself. For children who are floating around aimlessly, you may need to convince them that you found the hook, that you found the thing that they're interested in. Once you've interested them in the bait, make sure that you have other members of staff to triangulate these positive messages. Use them as convincers if you like. Get them to drip feed the same messages to reinforce the new aptitude or skill that you've discovered. Plan for all of your hard work to be thrown back in your face every day, every week, every month. Plan to invest your time with no immediate reward. In amongst all the chaos of the present day, be mindful of the moment. You are doing something remarkable, something altruistic, something life-changing. Trevor may not thank you immediately for having a profoundly positive impact on his life, but then teaching was never about what I can get for myself, but what I can do for others.